Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Rune News. I'm your host, Ryan Ryan, and as always, it's bloody good to have you guys here today in the audience. Now, Jagex has released some Valamore tweaks and drop rates on the Perilous Moons and Colosseum this week. Some of the changes are really important. I'm going to go through those with you guys today. But first off, I want to ask you guys one simple question for you to answer in the comment section down below. And that is, with the Colosseum, how are you progressing so far? It's been about two weeks now. If you haven't tried it, tell me about your experience with Perilous Moons or anything else you're doing in Valamore. But I want to know how people are progressing with the way that metas are being formed, the way that they're practicing. Are you becoming a, a better player? Or are you just still fucking dog shit? Make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe while you're down there. I'd really appreciate the support. You guys are the best. My name is Ryan Ryan. You're watching Rune News. And you're watching Rune News. This week's update for Old School RuneScape consists of Valamore tweaks and drop rates. Now, the changes in this blog are very important. I'll do my best to uh, relay the information to you guys as easily as I can. We'll start off with the Perilous Moons. Now, the drop rates for this is a 1 in 56 for each individual uh, moon boss. For example, if you kill the Blood Moon boss, you have a 1 in 56 chance of receiving any Blood Moon armor or the dual Mag Daddy. Same goes for the Blue Moon and the Eclipse Moon. And if you kill all three of them, you get an additional 1 in 56 chance of getting an, an item from all three of the bosses. Either one, it doesn't matter. Which means overall you have a 1 in 14 chance of receiving a drop from Perilous Moons, which is fucking dog shit because I've got, I'm, I'm double the drop rate with absolutely fucking nothing. So, love to see that. Thank you, Jagex, you dogs. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, there's also a duplication protection system, which means you can't receive a duplicate item from the set you've already completed. I'm pretty sure it goes weapon helmet body legs as well and then you'll start getting dupes uh, which is great you should be able to go through this and complete it a lot faster than barrows as well which will help a lot of uh, early mid game players especially those who are iron men moving on now to the Colosseum. the drop rates are all explained down below but they've got a cute little chart here that we're going to check out basically for the unique drop table if you roll on that you will not get a standard roll along with it and it can only happen from wave six onwards and the drop rate here if you can't see is one in 108 one in 92 one in 76 60 44 and 28 at wave 11 and the drop rates uh, sorry, well, the unique drop table rolls with the Echo Crystal being 6 out of 10, 3 out of 10 for the Sunfire Armor, and then the uh, the Ninja Star is 1 out of 10. Now, for the Sunfire Armor, it is uh, it favors items that you don't already have. You can still get dupes, but you're more likely to get the Sunfire gear that you don't already have. I don't know if that means in your bank or if it's in your collection log. I'm not sure, but... It's still random otherwise. For the Echo Crystal, you have a 1 in 10 chance of rolling 2 or 3 Echo Crystals as well. The pet is 1 in 200, and you uh, guaranteed the uh, quiver on the final wave, of course. And the pet can only be rolled on the final wave as well. Yeah, you got to, excuse me, complete wave 11, obviously, to roll for the pet. Makes perfect sense. Now we'll move on to the Valamore updates. That was all the drop rates discussed. We've knocked that out of the part. And we'll start off with the Colosseum here. So basically, the range Fremenic at the start is more accurate and hits harder, but the melee one has a lesser max hit. Doesn't really make too much difference if you handle them properly. It's still annoying that you can splash on the melee Fremenic, but... You know, maybe they'll fix that one day or at least make a change. I heard it was a bug. I'm starting to believe it kind of isn't. Who knows? Um, the Colosseum will now receive the, collect you'll receive the correct number of glory for stacked modifiers. I guess that wasn't working properly either. They've upped the uh, Colosseum security so you'll no longer find NPCs wandering the arena, which I've not seen, but that's interesting. Uh, Monster Examine now works completely on the NPCs in the Colosseum. And you can now trade Dizana's Quiver for the Sunfire Splinters by talking to Menemus, which is fucking huge. That means people don't have to spend all their days just repeating Wave 1 over and over again for the Sunfire Splinters. You just stack up a bunch of Quivers, hand those bad boys in. Not sure how much you're going to get. I would imagine maybe like 15k, 20, maybe even 50k Splinters. I don't know. It might not be that much. I think 10k is probably a, a decent ballpark figure to assume. But we'll find out, I guess, uh, when the game's back on in like an hour's time. For the Perilous Moon changes, these are uh, pretty pretty insignificant changes. Uh, a lot of them is that they've taken a look at the Eclipse boss, so you shouldn't hit so many ones now. Especially people are using the Fang and they're just hitting ones, which was a bit weird. So they fixed that problem. The, uh, the Sulfur M-Word special attack will no longer bump them out of combat, which means that you won't get jumped by someone else or have someone jumping them because I'm pretty sure it's not multi-combat. I could be wrong on that. When fighting the moon bosses, the Ring of Recall now protect, uh, sorry, correctly loses charges. That's cool. Sipping tea is now faster at the camps, which is massive. It was a really annoying delay there. Don't even know why it was there in the first place. 
There's a force camera movement apparently, which I don't remember seeing. That's been uh, removed, which is awesome. And with the Perilous Moon bosses, they've made a, a quick escape, so that way you can get the fuck out if you need to, if you didn't bring a teleport. And the other thing here that I liked is, uh, oh, the Dormac Daddies now have a stab attack style, which is cool. But there was something else here. Um, oh yeah, the Eclipse Moon phase, uh, you know, the clone phase, where it's basically just whack a boss, like whack a mole when he's turning. You can actually kill him there now instead, because you would just sit there hitting ones constantly, and like you, you wouldn't be able to finish him until the end of the phase. Now you can finish him and get the fuck out of there. That's awesome because that was actually a bit annoying to sit through even though it's probably the most fun part about the entire Perilous Moons. Maybe even the most fun thing in the whole of Valamol, even the game. Just whack-a-mole on that boss is actually super satisfying, especially with like an Elder Maul or a slow weapon. You just sit there giving them the donk. So that's awesome. Thank you for that, Jagex. In general, they've now made it so you can do a one-time fee at the Falconry to be able to use the bird, which is awesome. The Master Hunters can relax. They fixed the bug preventing you from teleporting to the Hunters Guild on your skill cape. I don't have 99 Hunters, so I don't give a shit. Oh, here we go. This is a big one, alright boys? The Huntsman's Kit now correctly lets you store all your Hunter items. You know how you couldn't put a single fucking thing in it except like box traps and butterfly jars? Now you can put all your Hunter gear in the Hunter's Kit. That's awesome. However, I apologize, but Black Chin Chompers are no longer allowed inside the Huntsman's Kit. I know it's actually been the case for about a week now, they're only just announcing it, but for those who are making money by storing the Black Chin Chompers and getting away with it because you couldn't get PK'd, you're welcome for the millions that you may have made, but uh, yeah. Not anymore. And if you were using that and you don't like that I've, uh, I guess, exposed it to Jagex, sit the fuck down. I don't care. Fuck you. So, there we go. The Huntsman's Kit is now an actual Huntsman's Kit. It's fucking useful. Nice work. Appreciate that, Jagex. Uh, there's been a bug which uh, means you will now only be able to use the meat sack for hunter activities. That makes sense because anyone, like the meat sack is kind of garbage for PVM, even though people try to justify, take the meat sack to God Wars dungeon. You're not taking fucking logs to God Wars. So shut the fuck up, all right? So it's, it's there to, it's to claim your raw meat. That's cool. Moving on. Everything else in here is kind of garbage. There's nothing really too, um, like, important. They've moved the birds around in the, uh, this, the what's the place called? Sivart, 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 Sivitas, Illa Fortis, the Valamore City. Um, they've m moved the, the pretzels around, they've made it so that the icon in the portal nexus is normal. Pretty standard garbage, nothing too uh, important. Another one worth noting, shortly after the release of Valamore, we fixed a bug where Sunfire runes were giving XP per rune made rather than per essence. At the time this was being used to gain far higher XP rates than intended, we don't intend to revert back those rates. We, don't, we do want to make Sunfire runes a bit more generous, as such we've doubled the runecraft XP. What the fuck? Check that out! That's probably one of the biggest sleeper buffs in the fucking game. So they fucked up and they decided, fuck it. Sounds good. So they've doubled the XP, runecrafting XP for making Sunfire Runes. Alright. Big dub for Jagex. Next week, the Undead Pirates are coming to the game. But uh, as... Uh, <laughs> you guys don't give a shit. You guys don't PvP. And all if you do PvP, all you're doing is crying because you don't get shivery. Sit the fuck down. Learn to win a poll. Moving on, other changes. There's not really anything special here either. The Light Bearer, if you equipped it shortly before your special attack energy was due to restore, it won't actually delay the energy restoration, which is pretty nice. Otherwise, yeah, it's pretty much um, basic garbage. And then PvP Worlds, LMS is back on Oswell, which means Daddy is getting fucking mad on stream, which I'll be live streaming five days a week, not Wednesdays, which is today or Saturdays. And that seems to be it this week for the Old School RuneScape update for Rune News. However, don't go anywhere. Stop! We got the Grand Exchange update coming up, which is going to make you a shit ton of gold in Old School RuneScape. You're going to want to strap him for that one, boys. But in the meantime, I'm going to give you a quick 10 second update on RuneScape 3 right now. Thank you, Ryan Ryan, Rune News. Here's a little fun fact about RuneScape 3. RuneScape 3 does not have a Valamore, which means by default, RuneScape 3 is fucking dog shit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Grand Exchange segment for Rune News. The Christmas crackers are on the rise, and it's fucking April. Do you know why? Because death matches, gambling addictions, they never take a break, no matter what time of the year it is. These guys are fiends for money. They've got problems that need help, and it's up to you guys to make sure you take advantage of their pettiness 
and you buy yourself some Christmas crackers. Now, these are going to continue to rise because they are dropping in like quantity in game. And they're obviously increasing in value because this is a way that people make a quick buck in game. So if I was you and you want to make some quick money, buy as many Christmas crackers as you can. Flip them by about an extra 10% of value and they're guaranteed to sell within the week because people with addictions can't help but take advantage of this system. And Christmas crackers are a great way to do it. Fuck death matches. Fuck the gamblers. Take advantage of it, boys. Easy money. Next, we have this Sunfire Fnatic helmet, but this rule really applies for all the Sunfire gear as well as like all new items that come to the game. They're on the way down, but this helmet in particular is being reviewed today because one, it's fucking ugly, and two, when you come to a Slayer task, which is the main place you're using Sunfire Fnatic gear, you're going to wear a Slayer helmet anyway. This is going to continue to drop a lot faster than the rest of the gear. Now, the Cypher Vitor has actually been on the rise a lot because of the Colosseum. Now, the hype is starting to die down. The profits are starting to drop off, but this is likely going to stick around the 1 to 1.1 billion mark with the weapon still. The Cypher is very flexible. It's been buffed recently. It's very good. Its uh, versatility inside the Col Colosseum is a big selling point for it right now. If you've got a scythe, you're in the money. I recommend getting into Theatre of Blood and making some of that big cash because this is as big as the scythe has ever been and likely will be for a very long time. And finally, of course, we have the mole slippers. The train is leaving the station, boys. Now that the Valamore hype is dipping and falling off, people get back into making some real money. Now, you want to invest in mole slippers while you can because this is an old peak. This is nothing compared to where we're going to be. And at 30 mil this time next year, 12 months from now, we're going to be hitting the peak. Mark my words or unsubscribe. Make sure Sure you buy some mole slippers today tell your friends about it so they buy them too yours go up in value it's a pretty easy scheme it's not a pyramid scheme and i'm not investing i only play iron man please don't ban me jagex my name is wade green and you're watching rare news Our first Iron Man moment for the week goes to Solo Snails, who is unfortunately a booger helm, so he's disgusting, but he got the Blood Moon chest plate on 1KC. Today's theme for Iron Man moments is about people who may or may not be Iron Man, but they get low KC drops, and Old Mate here on mobile is one of them. However, the next screenshot was from someone who has reposted this screenshot in the hopes to land in Rune News and try to play the algorithm. If you're going to try and like cheese your way and spam pictures in my Discord to get in the Rune News, I'm absolutely not going to post it in Rune News. There's no fucking way I'm going to show your low KC drops in Rune News. However, this week, I will make the exception. Because you have Demonic Butt here getting a 1KC, with one rumor, KC, Pretzel Pet, nice work. Don't ever fucking spam me again. Fuck off. And finally, the most important Iron Man moment update for Rune News of the century. Your boy, Ryan Ryan, racism, Rune News, King Condor, Mole Pet, 49KC, Zolcano Pet, 8KC, two pets, 12 hours apart. That's why I got a huge cock. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of Rune News for this week. My name is Ryan Ryan. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the live stream. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Rune News. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him, goddamn! Fuck me, look at that boy. Yeah.